Yes, the floor was now a draggled mess. Stumbling over a sopping towel, Andrew almost dropped the child, which was now wet and slippery in his hands, like a strange white fish. So in contrast to the beginning when the room was all, you know, clean, though it was like very a little poorly furnished, but it was a very clean room in the beginning when the doctor had come to this house. And by this time, by the end, uh, when the case had been done, when the child was born and was okay, then by this time, the floor was all a mess. Stumbling over a stopping towel, Andrew almost dropped the child, which was now wet and slippery in his hands like a strange white fish. So the child was like a fish, white fish. For mercy's sake, for mercy's sake, doctor, whimpered the midwife, it's still born. So by this time, the child had not been revived. Andrew did not heed her. Beaten, despairing, having labored in vain for half an hour, he still persisted in one last effort. Rubbing the child with a rough towel, crushing and releasing the little chest with both hands, trying to get breath into that limp body. And then, as by miracle, the pygmy chest, which his hands closed, gave a short, convulsive heave, another and another. So finally, when he was trying to give the last effort, then a miracle happened that pygmy, the small chest, it started breathing. It started giving those uh, convulsive heaps, one, then another. Andrew turned giddy. So he was uh, his condition had already become very poor, like he was almost feeling giddy. The sense of life springing beneath his fingers after all that unavailing striving was so exquisite, it almost made him faint. So the, uh, when he found the life bubbling in his hands, uh, after so much of struggle, you can say, that feeling was so good. It was such an exquisite feeling that it, it, that feeling made him almost faint out of anxiety. So what was his reaction when he found the baby uh, breathing or coming to life? Like he almost felt giddy. He almost felt like getting fainted out of, you can say, unhappy happiness. He read, redoubled his efforts feverishly. So now when he saw that his struggle, you know, was uh, getting fruit, that uh, he was getting success in what he had been doing for the last an hour, half an hour, then uh, he got, uh, when he sensed some success coming out of his efforts, he redoubled his efforts feverishly. The child was gasping now deeper and deeper. So now the child was breathing deeper and deeper. A bubble of mucus came from his tiny nostril, a joyful, iridescent bubble. The limbs were so no longer boneless. The head no longer lay back spinelessly. The blanched skin was slowly turning pink. Then exquisitely came the child's cry. So when the child had started breathing, then the mucus came out from his one no tiny nostril. Uh, and then his limbs were, earlier his limbs were boneless, but they were no longer boneless. And his hand was, head was no longer lying back spinelessly. Now the head also, earlier it was uh, lodged to one side, now it was straight. And the white skin was slowly becoming pink. And then, uh, the, then came the child's cry. Dear father in heaven, the nurse sobbed hysterically. It's come, it's come alive. So the nurse was also very happy. She almost became, she started sobbing like a mad person, like it's alive. Henry, Andrew handed her the child. He felt weak and dazed. About him, the room lay in a shuddering litter. So the whole room was all in mess. Blankets, stalls, basins, soiled instruments, the hypodermic syringe impaled by its point in the uh, litonium, in the Pure knocked over the kettle on its side in a puddle of water. Upon the huddled bed, the mother still dreamt her way quietly through the anesthetic. So the whole room was mess. Everything, like including blankets and dolls, they were all, you know, scattered all here and there. And the and the mother was on her bed, and she was still, you know, in the under the effect of anesthesia. Like she was still unconscious. The old woman still stood against the wall. And the grandmother, that is the mother of Mrs. Suzanne, she was still standing, the, uh, you know, against the wall as it is. But her hands were together, her lips moved without sound, and she was pray praying. 
so at this time when uh, even the child had revived that woman uh, she was still you know uh, you know praying mechanically andrew wrung out his sleeve pulled on his jacket so now andrew who was uh, free the one who had been uh, solved the whole case successfully he wrung out his sleeve because his sleeves were already dripping with water now he wrung them out and he pulled on his jacket i'll fetch my bag later nurse he went downstairs through the kitchen into the scullery so he went downstairs through the kitchen into the scullery sort of kitchen uh, sink his lips were dry at the scullery he took a long drink of water he reached for his hat and coat outside he found jo standing on the pavement with a tense expectant face so outside her jo was already waiting for him and he was expecting a good or a bad news all right jo he said thickly both are right so he gave him a news that both are right it was quite light nearly 5 o'clock so he had gone to that house at somewhere in the midnight and he came out of that house at 5 o'clock in the morning so it was a time when uh, people start for the new day and he had just finished his previous day a few miners were already in the streets the first of the night shift moving out so a few miners were already in the streets so the new day had started so the workers uh, the miners had had already you know uh, come in the streets because they were going for work the first of the night shift moving out so the night shift people you know they were coming out and uh, the next two days workers would start out as andrew walked with them spent and slow spent and slow means like totally exhausted spent is totally exhausted and slow because he was very tired so when andrew was walking with those people which people those who had finished their night night shift his footfalls echoing with the, with the others under the morning sky he kept thinking blindly oblivious to all other work he had done in blenley so he did not remember like what he had done in uh, blenley so he kept on thinking blindly what did he think i've done something oh god i've done something real at last so this is uh, the kind of feeling which we get when we have done something worthwhile so after getting the things done uh, like this you know when he had been able to do something wonderful uh maybe because of his knowledge determination and all so the finally he was very satisfied he was very satisfied okay he forgot what he had done earlier but today he knew that he had done something great so the chapter comes so here is the birth of the child birth of the doctor the which doctor the one who had become confident of his you know worth of his you know caliber and of his uh, you know what it like uh his uh, knowledge intelligence or whatever the you know caliber he has got today it was a day to celebrate that right so the title of the chapter birth where a child uh, where a family you know got revived because of the birth of a child in the family the child got revived the one who was born still born and thirdly it's the birth of a doctor who had realized his worth that day right so it was a beautiful chapter with a great theme like when you decide to do something selflessly for some for others then you get success provided you put in your best efforts endless efforts okay so here the doctor was very selfless he was not doing anything for himself he was doing everything for the family the one who had been uh, in hope of some happiness for the last 20 years so it was his you can say will power selflessness which made him get success right so here it is uh i have done something oh god so you people will be giving the answers now are you ready let's see first the attendance So all of you should be ready to give the answers. Go through the first question, and uh, Aditi will give the answer to the first question. Would that be fine? Aditi will give answer. Aditi, I'm giving you. All of you get a few minutes to go through the questions. Think about the answers, then we'll start. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, Aditi is supposed to give the answer of the question number one. I have done something. Oh God, I've done something real at last. So why does Andrew say this? And what does it mean? Just now this answer has been discussed. Aditi, unmute yourself. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Vita, give the answer. Uh, ma'am, uh, I have done something. I have done something real at last. Mm -hmm. Andrew says this because he was happy that uh, he was able to keep his promise to Joe Morgan. Mm -hmm. And he was excited about saving the lives of both mother and child. Mm -hmm. Before the operation, Andrew was very sad because mm -hmm. he was thinking about all the pain he has to go through. When he successfully delivered the baby, it was dead. And uh, he tried his best to save the mother. After curing the mother, he was able to diagnose what was wrong with the baby and give the necessary treatment and bring the baby back to life. Mm -hmm. This was a really uh, contented moment for him. So this is why he says that. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Good answer. Uh, roll, now, Arshdeep Singh, roll number seven. Arshdeep Singh, roll number six is again absent. Okay. Very nice. Roll number seven, Arshdeep Singh. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. First question again. I have done something. Oh, God, I have done something real at last. Uh, Andrew says this because uh, he was very happy uh, after he was able to save both a mother and the baby. Mm -hmm. uh, at his time, very few people had uh, uh, been able to revive the stillborn baby. Mm -hmm. So it was a very proud moment for him. Mm -hmm. uh, he was still a uh, uh, fresher. Still. Uh, freshly out of the uh, medical school so he was not having uh, enough experience but uh, he did this uh, so he was very happy mm. yes okay now let us ask somebody else Areman Areman unmute yourself Yes, Aryaman. Yes, ma'am. Give the answer, Aryaman. Ma'am, first one. Yes. Yes, what happened? Yes, ma'am, I'm going to go home. My click click over here. Ma'am, because Andrew said this because uh, he had some kind of satisfaction mm -hmm. as uh, as his duty was to save lives, being a doctor. Mm -hmm. So he said this because he have he hasn't saved only one life but two. Mm -hmm. Two lives. You got muted. Yes, you got muted. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Uh, ma'am, and the saving of the child was very difficult for him, mm. but he was able to save the child, which he, uh, so he felt very happy. And uh, Uh, he also saved the mother. Okay. <clears throat> okay, prepare your answer in a better way. Otherwise, you know the answer. It's okay. Now you can mute yourself. Kavya, yes, roll number 25. Yes, ma'am. Um, as we already know that the Andrew Manson was uh, newly out of medical school and he just began his medical practice. He said these words because uh, he was able to bring a stillborn uh, child back to life 
which was uh, impossible in the beginning the child is born still to the wife of joe morgan <clears throat> it means that andrew and you has been able to do something wonderful he has been able to apply whatever uh, whatever he learned in medical textbooks uh, it was a really great achievement for andrew okay okay uh, now ashutosh give the answer ashutosh 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 it's not possible that you don't know the answer okay divanshi yes ma'am hmm give the answer ma'am andrew occurred uh, utter these words as he is able to bring a stillborn child back to his life which yeah. seemed impossible in the beginning yeah. the child is born still to the wife of joe morgan but mm -hmm. after the uh, various efforts of him he was able to re revive his life okay okay <clears throat> so let's see the answer of uh rule number 43 ashika yashika aditya joshi आदित्य जोशी अमृतपाल मैम यस एंड्रयू वाज जस्ट अ फ्रेशर एंड ही हैड नॉट गॉट मच एक्सपीरियंस इन दिस फील्ड ही मस्ट हैव बीन गुड इन एज एन इन हिज एकेडमिक्स बट दिस वाज द फर्स्ट टाइम ही हैड एन अचीवमेंट इन द रियल लाइफ सो ही सेड i'm i've got i'm done something i have done something real at last because it was he had used something in real and done something that had not been difficult before mm -hmm. he had saved mm -hmm. the life of a stillborn child which was seeming mm -hmm. impossible mm -hmm. to the nurse also yes okay so here basically when you answer this question this point like i've done really uh, i've done something real at last children then you must mention like uh, uh, But like, what's the point of saying like at last? Because Andrew was a youngster. How could he talk about something at last? So you can point out the kind of day it was for him. That day, it, he was already you know uh, physically, mentally exhausted, and uh, he he was quite depressed also from the way of life. But when he uh, entered the room house uh, to sort out this case. uh then although he knew that it was a very critical case it was going to be a premature delivery of the child so and uh, even the condition of mother was not very stable and uh, when the child was born it was born a still born child and the nurse who was opposite to him had already given up uh, on the life of the child but he uh, and his efforts to give life to the already uh still born child was something which was no less than a miracle at that time so and he also knew this uh, and moreover uh, he had see, uh, he had only read about this kind of case from somewhere and uh, knowing uh, having read something and uh, doing that actually to success is something else so that the reason the fact that he had been able to give proof to that he had been able to implement what he had read and uh, been able to give uh, you know life to a stillborn child was something uh, which basically he also did not expect but he had done that so that's why he says that he's done something real at last because he might not have been very sure about the success of the case but yes he had done it finally so here at last word is also very symbolic why at last he says that he started off he did he worked very hard he spent about more than half an hour upon the upon something which even the nurse was telling him that it would be of no use but yes it was useful in the end 
so you will be talking about the fact like it was a miracle and secondly that uh, it was something he was doing something which he had only read about somewhere and uh, put, uh, putting that putting something putting some idea which you just read about or heard about in in a reality is something else and that he had done finally so it it shows a sense of contentment sense of uh, achievement right that his selflessness has actually been able to get fructified okay third second question is there lies a great difference between textbook medicine and the world of practicing physician discuss so the same thing which we were discuss discussing in first part also like there is a big difference between what we read and what we actually do right reading uh, knowing what is written in the book and actually practicing it in real life that is very different so you have to discuss this very perfect so already this first question was the explanation of this very question so you can, you can explain the same thing which we have discussed in first part only like uh, okay you do this on your own we can discuss this question tomorrow in elaborate way and the third question is like do you know of any incident when someone has been brought back to life from the brink of death through medical help so you do you know of any incident when someone has been brought back to life from the brink of death through medical help so discuss medical procedures such as organ transplant and organ regeneration that are used to save human life so here you will have to talk about a case where you where the patient had no you know hope but that but that patient got well because of the medical advancement so this is also your uh, personal you know experience you'll be talking about the about some case which you know okay and the second question is all about uh, you know your opinions upon the upon this matter so write these three answers today on your own and tomorrow we'll be discussing these three answers again would that be fine okay now 37 people have come who has come new one who joined the class in the end i guess chirag came in the end okay uh, first all of you please write the roll numbers like all majority of children have written first the roll number then name then class okay that way attendance becomes easier for me to take anmol singh please write your roll number first anmol has come now earlier he was not there yes children now be ready for your exams okay now start studying regularly properly okay make notes go through all chapters okay wherever you people have difficulties get, try to get them sorted out okay we'll see you tomorrow